today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Time Pro Iron. And this is a video that I wish I would have had when I first got this iron, there is a very specific way to use this iron. If you don't know how to use a specific tool, you might think something sucks and you're like, this is, I literally was like super negative about it. I was like, I don't like it. I will never use it. I'll never promote this. And ended up being a really great tool that I actually really, really love. And I am so glad that I gave it a chance because it really is an amazing tool if you know how to use it. So this is the Time Pro iron. So you can see it does have a really good long cord, which I love. It says time right here and this is the rose gold color so you can see right here it's got this like kind of curved beveled edge and then if I flip it around you can see it just looks like a flat iron so one side is actually a flat iron and then one side is gonna be your curling iron so that's how you can actually do numerous different hairstyles with this curling iron you can also wave I haven't mastered the waving yet I need to figure that out and maybe I'll do another video you've got your on off switch so this is how you're going to turn your your iron on and then right here you've got these little notches so when you turn it on it will automatically go to the setting that you had it on before which is really nice it has like a little memory that's like oh she used 350 last time so that's what i'm going to go to right here is going to be 300 325 350 375 and 400 so it goes up to 400 degrees i have found that if you leave it at 350 that's like the perfect spot and my hair is like sometimes a little stubborn with different curling irons. Most of the time I have to go to at least 390, but with this one I can do 350 and it's perfect. It does everything I need it to do. So it's gonna heat up in 55 seconds. So once it's heated up, you can see how it was kind of blinking before. It's heated up now. So now these are all solid, they're not blinking. That's when you know, okay, it's ready. It's at 350, I'm good to go. You're just gonna hold it down and then that turns off. That's kind of like how you use it. And this little cord is um, a swivel cord, but the cord is long. It's super duper long. So if you are a hairstylist and you want to use it in your um, in your workplace, your, that was one of my biggest pet peeves when I was a hairstylist was that the cords were never long enough and it was so annoying because I was always fighting a cord. This cord, I don't know how long it is, but it's, it's really, really, really long. So that's really handy and I love that. Currently they are on sale. They have a 30% off site-wide sale. So normally this iron is 179. It's currently on sale for 125. And I have a coupon code, which is Sam Sherman. That's gonna save you guys an extra $10 off so you can use it alongside their current sale. So you're gonna get it for 115. So it's a really good price. If you're like me and you just are scatterbrained and you forget to turn it off, it's gonna shut off after 30 minutes. So it's not gonna be sitting on all day long. Plates are titanium and the barrel is 1.5 inches in diameter. It also comes in a lime green color. Oh, this really cute light pink color. Kind of like a lilac, the galaxy, plum kind of burgundy color. I'm going to show you the tutorial of me getting into it, but I'm going to talk through what you need to do slowly so that I can like really show you guys when it's not on. Um, and then we'll sh I'll show you guys with me actually curling my hair. The key is you always want to work with vertical sections. You do not want to be going a horizontal. So instead of going like this and getting a horizontal piece, you're going to be pinching and going down. And that is a really, really good tip. Also, you always want to pull your hair forward towards your face. That's gonna give you the best curl. If you don't want as curly of a curl, then as you're pulling it down, you're gonna pull it towards the face and then kind of go out towards your shoulders. The main thing that you always need to remember, and this is something that that's, I was holding it completely wrong because I was holding it with my thumb up top here. So then I was like trying to hold it like the, I didn't know what I was doing and it was making all these dents. This is the on off button. Your thumb always wants to live here. No matter what side of hair, like no matter whether you're doing this side or this side, your thumb needs to be behind the button so that it's always going to be like this. I just want to show you guys while it's off so that I can really show you and, and slow it down because obviously I'm not going to have this holding on my hair when it's hot forever. You're going to go in like this. Your, your thumb is going to be up on the top when you're going in. You're going to grab it so that when you're looking in the mirror, you can see your, your top of your thumb, you can see the button, and you're grabbing it so that you can see the plate 
it's all kind of like in this angle. And this is going to be po pointing more downwards on the left side of your head. So you're gonna grab the hair forward like this. You're going to put it in, clamp it, and then you're gonna twist it. So you're just gonna twist it so that you're now seeing your thumb here. And you're gonna pull it forward like this. Then as you get to the ends, you're gonna start pushing this bit down so that your elbow is almost like up. So you're pushing down like that. So you're gonna start like this, clamp it, twist it so that you can see your thumb, pull it down, and then if you want a looser curl, out like this, so that this is pointing down. Then on this side, it's gonna be the opposite. So you're still gonna grab your vertical section, just like this. So I've got my vertical piece, and you wanna make sure that the piece that you're using is no wider than the actual plate. So if you have it where it's gonna like be a huge, long, wide piece, it's not gonna work because your part of your hair is gonna come out. Do not go wider than the plate. Instead of this bit put, be pointing down like it was before, it's now gonna be pointing, you're gonna start flat, you're gonna twist, but then you're gonna be pointing with this up instead of this side going down. So this is my right side of my head. Again, I'm still seeing my thumb. I'm going in the exact same way. I'm clamping, I'm twisting, I'm pulling forward, and then I'm gonna be coming down, and then this is going to be leading versus on the other side, this was leading. So this was going down this way on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this is pointing down and you're kind of pulling it down to, like I just think of it, I'm trying to pull to my shoulder. And that is how you're gonna get those really pretty, kind of like beachy, like full voluminous, like Victoria's Secret waves. If you want curlier hair, like if you want those really tenderly curls, then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna still grab your vertical section. That was a little bit too small. But instead of going down and out like that, you are going to be doing, you're just gonna be pulling it straight forward towards your face. And that's gonna give you like more of a curl curl. If you decide, ooh, that's too curly. I don't like this. This has made my hair look like too curly it's a flat iron, flat iron as well. So you literally just grab your piece, your thumb is still behind the little button. So you're basically just gonna hold it straight, clamp it, straighten it, because that's the flat iron, the flat iron side is right there. So when you wanna flat iron the top, let's just say, and I'm gonna be doing a tutorial showing you guys. My thumb is still here, it's still behind the thing, but when I'm flat ironing, I'm now going to be seeing the other plate. Do you see how this one has like a kind of lip over it? Whereas that one was just the whole plate you could see. This one has the little bit of the kind of lip over and my thumb is now on the bottom versus my thumb being on the top. That's how you're gonna flat iron. So if you wanna flat iron your hair, make sure your thumb is on the bottom. I cannot see the button. I cannot see the on off button. You're gonna do it, clamp it, and pull it down just like this. And that's gonna flat iron. And you can flat iron your whole head just like you would with a normal flat iron with your thumb being on the bottom versus the top. If you want to see curls, you want to see the button and your thumb's gonna be on top. If you want your hair straight and you want a flat iron, you're gonna see the lip, you're gonna see no button, and your thumb's gonna be on the bottom. And that's what you need to remember. And if you can remember that, that's all you need to know. And you're gonna always create the best looking curls or flat iron or whatever. Apparently there is a way to wave. I haven't figured it out yet. I need to, um, I need to play with it and master it so that I can teach you guys. But that's basically what you need to know as far as the actual like positioning, where your thumb is, how you're holding it, how you're holding the pieces of hair. And as I'm showing you through the tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys like how I do my front bit, how I kind of position myself for the back and all that kind of stuff. Just so you guys can see exactly how I hold the iron in each specific section of my head. Once you get the hang of it, you can really master it and we can all be fabulous together. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is brush my hair. This brush is amazing. Ever since I got it in the kit, I have not used my other wet brushes or dry brushes or anything since. 
it is so good whether your hair is wet or dry it's like literally the nicest hairbrush ever once you are done curling your hair you can brush out your waves or your curls and it's like literally the best brush to just cut brush them out and make them look all fabulous so we are going to go ahead and turn on the iron so usually i'll leave it on like right in the middle there what you want to do is start off with little vertical sections and i usually start off right there and the I think it's just easier when you do vertical section because it lays in the iron a little bit better. And you're going to kind of hold it up like this. I'm pulling it forward, like directing it to my face, making sure that my thumb and my button can be seen. And then pulling it forward. And then as I get closer to the face, I'm pulling it out. And that's how you're going to get that kind of like looser wave towards the end. And then if you're like, oh man, that was a bit too curly. You just grab the end and you flat iron it and then it's straight. That's what I like about this is that it's a flat iron and a curling iron into one. It gives you so much body, it makes your hair like so big and full and that's why I like it. And I found that when I curl my hair with this, it actually makes it so that my hair lasts way longer. Like, I don't have to wash it nearly as much. See how, like, that that was really too wide? That's going to be too wide for the iron. You don't want to have a section that's any wider than the actual plate of the iron. So once I get to the back here, I just kind of pull it forward and then go out. And that creates those, like, perfect little curls that one's a little curlier than i like so i'm just going to straighten the end and if you want to like hold the hair a little bit as you go to guide it you can always do that too look that one turned out real good but do you see already how much body i have so i usually separate that bit and then i'll go into two sections here and again once i get to the side i pull forward You just want to kind of pull it out a little bit. And again, if you're a little bit too curly, flat iron it and it kind of softens the wave a little bit more. So see how I'm like holding it and I'm basically clamping it and then automatically twisting and then going out. And then flat ironing. <laughs> Same with these pieces. I'm going to kind of redirect it over a little bit, kind of to the other side, and then twist, and then pull down and out, and then flat iron the end bit. I just love how it does these front bits. It literally just gives you the most amazing like swoopy dupe those really perfect waves that I cannot achieve with a regular curling iron like no matter how hard I try I can never get it to look like this look at that it's so good and then again that's a little curly so I'm just gonna flat iron it so it's a little straighter see how now it's like what is happening here because I slept on it what you can do is I'm just gonna pull all this over and make sure that nothing's in the way you can grab these little bits up top here where it looks crazy and then my thumb is still behind here but I've got it underneath I'm just gonna flat iron those bits so that it's not looking crazy so you're literally you've got a flat iron and a curling iron into one anywhere that you have like wonky bits or you know if you just want to smooth this out right here you can just give it a little flat iron and then I'll usually just go ahead and grab like a few more bits and just kind of flat iron them a little bit more. And you just have like this amazing beachy wave. Now, once you get to the other side of the head, you might be like, well, how do I hold it? It's going to be awkward. You still want to be holding your hair forward towards your face. You also want to make sure that you can still see your thumb and the button. So you're still going to start off, but instead of going down like this, your thing is pointing up. So you're going to come and again pull it out. Sometimes on this side I will have to just kind of guide my hair just a little bit just to make sure it doesn't come out. And again I'm just going to flat iron those end bits 
so that you have like a perfect wave. And it just creates these voluminous, like, I don't know, it's so hard to describe, but I just, I cannot seem to get the same look with a curling iron that I can with this. So it's great because if you want to be traveling and you want to have a flat iron and a curling iron into one, you only have to pack this and that's it. That one was perfect. See, that's way too wide, so I would cut that in half. You don't want it to be wider than your plate. And there's no like rhyme or reason. I just kind of start from the top and then just start kind of going down. See, that one was too wide, I think, so if some of it's gonna fall out. Yeah, some of it didn't get in there. And that's when you'll know like you should have dropped a little bit because like that one's all perfect but the one underneath it wasn't because it was too wide of a, of a piece. So just make sure that you're paying attention to how thick your piece is so that you don't lose any when you are coming down the, the hair. But see how you can create like a really, really curly curl or you can create like a wave, like a beach wave. So it's pretty cool that you can do both with the same um, with the same tool. And again, you're just always pulling towards your face and then once you get down to the ends, you kind of just pull it down and out. And that creates that like more beachy wave. If you wanted it to be really curly, then you would always just pull continuously to the, you know, the front of your face. You wouldn't kind of pull it out towards like your shoulder. So it's really all about positioning. That's gonna to be too wide, I just know it. So see how I'm pulling it towards, but then as I kind of get down to the ends, I'm pulling it out as if it was towards my ends. And then it's gonna give you that that softer wave versus a curl. If I wanted it to be curly, I'll show you if I completely pull it towards my face the whole time. So if I'm completely pulling it towards my face the entire time instead of pulling it out, see how you get a little bit more of a curl? It's like a little tighter versus pulling it out kind of straightens it a little bit more so that it's looser. Once I get to the top, I kind of over direct the other side of my head and I do usually have to hold these pieces and kind of guide them just a little bit. Oh, that one was so good. And then I'm just flat ironing the ends. Just want to make sure that your pieces aren't too big and that you're not putting too much hair in there because it wants to just be able to glide. And I found that if you have like tons of hair, it doesn't want to glide as well. So obviously if you have thicker hair, it just takes slightly smaller pieces. But you can see like it's pretty quick. It's not like it's something where you're like, oh, this is gonna take forever because I'm taking tiny pieces. It's definitely not the case. Oh, that was so good. Okay, so now on this side, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is smoothed out. There's no weird kinks anywhere. Once you're done, you're just gonna brush with that time brush through the curls just like this. That's what the back looks like. So hopefully you can see. Okay, so once all of that, I've changed by the way, <laughs> once all of that is curled, then I'm gonna take the Time Limitless Universal Spray. So if you look closely, you will see there are these gorgeous little sparkles. Can we get it focused, camera? Can we get it together? Yeah, we can. Look at those little sparkles. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. So on wet hair, you can spray this in your hair. It's gonna be your heat protectant, a mousse, a detangler. It's like takes care of all of the things. And then if you wanna spray it in your hair when it's dry, you can use this as a hair, like it's gonna replace your hair oil or a texturizer. So I'm just gonna give it a good shake. When it's dry, I like to just kind of spray it in my hand and then just kind of like work 
it through my hair. I feel like it's quite a wet formula. So if you spray it directly on the hair, it kind of like, it doesn't spray out like a super fine mist. So it's fine if it's wet. Like if your hair's wet already, then whatever, go ahead and spray it in there. But if it's dry, um, I would recommend putting it in your hands like this and then just kind of working it through your ends. And then you'll see it kind of just adds like a little bit of texture. And it kind of just pieces it out a little bit and like makes it extra shiny, but it's not like an oily feel. It doesn't feel like your typical hair oil, but it does what a hair oil can do by kind of smoothing everything out, but then also giving you texture without actually feeling like a texture spray where it feels like there's product or hairspray or anything like that. It still feels very movable, manageable, movable, is that a word? <laughs> movable, manageable, silky. It feels like hair. It doesn't feel like you have any product, but it kind of gives you that look like you, like you've put a texturizing spray in there. It smells kind of like crisp. There's like a crisp scent to it. Kind of like a little, not fruity, but like a, that kind of like a crisp pear or something. It's really nice. This is going to be your heat protectant, your detangler, your hair oil, your texturizer all into one. So again, if you're, if you have any trips planned, you bring your time pro iron, which is your flat iron, your weaver, your curling iron into one. You bring this and you're good to go. You don't have to bring a bunch of products, which I really, really like. Um, they do have another brush as well. It looks like this. So this is the difference between the two brushes. So for me, I would never use this one on wet hair, whereas this one I can, I can use on wet hair and it literally detangles so well. It doesn't snag, it's amazing. This one for me is more of a dry kind of hair brush. If you do wanna blow dry your hair, the air is gonna go right through these little vents. Personally, that's what I would recommend using it with would be to blow dry your hair. Boom. It instantly like is like a little, oh, that made my hair huge. That like literally just gave me so much volume. Let me just do it in the back here too. Wow. Yeah, okay, so it's really, really good for creating a little bit of back combing drama. And then you can just brush over. Okay, then they've got these adorable scrunchies. So I've actually been wearing this one, but mine is dirty, so I'm not gonna show you the dirty one. But they look like bracelets. So they're scrunchies, but they actually look like you're wearing jewelry. So like these creamy beige ones, when you have them on the wrist, they're actually super beautiful. See how cute they look? Like even though they're a scrunchie, because they have that little gold part, they actually look like you're wearing some kind of jewelry. So it doesn't make you feel like so dorky when you've got, I'm always, I've always got scrunchies on my wrists. Um, so they've got this little pack that has like kind of more of the neutral colors. Then they've got these more colorful ones that are like purple and teal and blue. Then they've got just straight up black with just different colors, silver, rose gold, and gold um, little metal clasp thingies. And then they've got kind of like the earthier, yeah, they're like kind of more earthy green, kind of like a dusty kind of grayish purple and then a soft dusty blue. And then what is that one? It's like a dark brown. They actually hold the hair really, really well. Um, and they look really cute on your wrist. With regular curling irons, I always feel like my hair is like still just a bit flat to my head. And with this, I feel like even if I didn't want to use a texturizer spray or some kind of like, you know, putty to make my hair look like it's bigger, it automatically does that for me so that I don't have to use a product if I don't want to. The problem with texturizing sprays, and you guys know I've, I'm a huge fan of texturizing sprays. I've used them in the past, but I've stopped using them. And that's because it just makes it so that my hair feels yucky. It feels gunky. It feels like I have to wash it more often. I'm really like on this like scalp health journey. And so I've been really mindful of what I've been putting on my head, what I've been putting on my hair, and just like trying to like not have to wash my hair as much. And when you use texturizing sprays, your hair just starts to feel kind of yucky that I'm like, even if I don't need to wash it, I'll wash it because I hate the way it feels. And it starts to get really snarled up and tangly because of all the texturizing spray in there. And this one is nice because even though it does kind of do what a texturizer does, it doesn't feel like I have any product in my hair. It doesn't take away the shine, but it gives you like all of this body and it makes you look like you've put a texturizer in there 
but there is no feeling like I don't feel any product in there I don't feel gunky or sticky or tacky it's silky I put my hands through it if I want to like it doesn't feel gross at all and then it's like a hair oil as well I mean it's like literally all the things so if you're traveling or if you're just like girl I don't want to have to have all these products in my house this is your everything. It's gonna heat protect, it's gonna detangle, it's going to be a mousse. It's a, it's like a styling magic potion. It does all the things that you need it. You can use it on wet hair, you can use it on dry hair. If you're using it on wet, spray it directly on the hair. If you're using it on dry, spray it into your hand. It's a very wet formula, so it works best if you spray it onto your hand if you're using it on dry hair, just so that you're not like spraying a one big clump of wetness into your dry hair. When I sent over my footage for my Instagram post that I did with them, they were like, oh my gosh, we absolutely love it. We loved how you were, you know, giving people tips on how to use it correctly, but because it was only an Instagram post, it was such a short amount of time that they asked me if I would actually do a YouTube video that was more thorough, that was more in depth. Hopefully this is gonna be helpful for you guys. Hopefully it'll teach you exactly how to use it. It gives me huge hair. It makes me look like my hair is way thicker than it is. It's shiny, it looks healthy, and these curls will stay for days. I don't know what it is about this iron, but it makes my hair stay curled way longer than than regular irons. If you're someone who's like, I only wanna wash my hair once a week, this is the iron for you. Because you, you do it, and you literally don't have to touch up your curls. They just stay. I don't know I don't know why. I don't know if it's the positioning. Like, I don't know, I'm not that smart. But I do know from experience that I do this. I don't have to touch up my hair for days afterwards. And I don't know what it is about it, but it makes it so that my hair doesn't get as greasy. I don't know, there's something magical about this thing. Now you guys know how to use it and I hope that I explain it in a way that makes sense to you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a fabulous day. Don't forget to use that, coup that coupon code, it's Sam Sherman. It's gonna save you guys an extra $10 off. It's the rose gold. I just think it's super nice and neutral. It's pretty, it's sparkly and it does an amazing job of curling my hair. Everything will be linked in the description box below and I'll see you guys in my next one.